So, welcome to Tales Tomorrow. I'm Maro, your storyteller for today, and with me I have some more RPG horror stories. I've been reading so many RPG horror stories that I genuinely don't think I have one of my own. To be honest, there's been some drama here and there, but it's never been like RPG story specific for me. It's always been just like he said, she said kind of things. So though, if I ever do have my own RPG horror story, I'll definitely share it on here. But until then, I'm gonna keep reading these. Let's get to the first story for today. AITA DM keeps killing my character off. Hey guys, been having a bad experience in this current campaign I'm playing. I'm playing a now level 11 Lizardfolk Cleric who I've really enjoyed playing so far. He meshes well with the party and his spells come in handy pretty often. But DM doesn't like him so much though. It's nothing extreme like banning spells or nerfing my abilities. But I'm beginning to notice a trend during combat. A few sessions ago, the party was fighting some undead in the crypts beneath an abandoned city. There was a group of zombies that swarmed us, led by a powerful skeleton warrior called a Muram. The Muram was wreaking havoc among the party pretty equally, scoring some strong hits on the barbarian and monk. I used destroy and dead to get rid of the zombies, and as soon as I did, things changed. The Muram started targeting only my cleric and nobody else. Even when the monk was more open, and even when the barbarian triggered an opportunity attack, the Muram only attacked me. It ended up killing my character, and the party had to revive him. When they cast a revivify, though, the DM made them roll against a high DC to succeed, saying that my soul was far from my body, and not eager to return. Anyway, they rolled high, and I came back. Yeah, clerics are really good against undead. I remember for me, my very first game had zombies. And wouldn't you know, a cleric was able to decimate zombies like it was no one's business. And basically, as the zombies would come back up, they would go down immediately. And it was just a, a big mess. I really should have uh, thought a little bit differently about how when I approach the fight. There gotta be some sort of an option instead of just straight up harassing the cleric player for, you know, playing a cleric that's really good against undead. It's like punishing a player for doing the thing they're supposed to be doing really well. Imagine if your campaign is all about animals and stuff like that, and you have a druid that can speak with every animal, and sometimes even dominate the animal's mind. Well, suddenly, the druid that is really good at the one thing they're doing gets to be good at the one thing they're doing. Maybe you gotta mix things up a little bit as a DM. If your player is really good at this one thing, it's really easy to find a counter for them. I mean, most classes in D&D, kind of have counters. You're fighting a very strong barbarian. Oh, look at that. Here, let's bring in some psychic damage. There are probably better solutions out there than going directly after Cleric. After that, there were some more combats where the enemies grouped up to only attack my Cleric, ignoring the rest of the party members. I got frustrated about this, so I talked with the DM, and she said that she's just roleplaying the enemies in a fair way. She said that reasonable enemies would only target the healer and take them down first. I said that I felt kind of singled out, and she just laughed it off. Next combat, a wizard killed my character again. Just because somebody is a healer or a cleric or whatever, uh, doesn't mean it really makes it lore friendly or really fair with how the enemies would react. If the monk is clearly doing something stupid and leaving themselves out in the open or they're rushing into the pile of enemies, then they should get punished for that. That would make sense for me, right? Because your enemies shouldn't be brainless. They should be able to actually strategize and come up with their own ideas, not just to rush one single target while everybody else gets to decimate them. I mean, there's nothing wrong at all with wanting to make your enemies smart or strategic, but there is kind of an issue if all of your enemies, every single one of them, will only target the one player. If your cleric is dominating the fight, there's more than one ways to deal with the cleric instead of just straight up trying to kill them for the sake of killing them. You could throw in some homebrew enemies that are anti-holy magic or counter-holy magic or are heavily resistant to holy magic in some way or capacity from like an, an enchantment or something. Or maybe they were like a corrupted order of undead paladins or something. I don't know. Come up with stuff. You got, you are the DM. You have the creative ways to come up with ideas and things in order to deal with your party members uh, when it comes to them being feeling overpowered in a specific situation. Or if you want, you could just not use a undead for a bit, but when orcs or goblins or anything you want, that cleric would just not be able to easily hand clap away, either find creative ways to make sure that the player is not feeling targeted or start going after every player fairly. This brings us to the most recent session, where a fight against the monk's story arc boss ended up with me dead. The boss 
only targeted me once again. He got a revive for the third time and is reconsidering being with the party now. If he keeps dying over and over, what reason does he have to continue this journey? Am I wrong in thinking this? That I'm being targeted? I mean, if every single enemy is just attacking you specifically just to kill you and not everybody else in the party, then yeah, that sounds like targeting. And you should probably tell the DM, hey, DM, can you please stop doing that? Can you maybe find other creative ways to make it so that I'm not the only one constantly singled out for being a cleric of all things? Maybe, maybe don't make us fight undead. Make us fight something else. Something that cleric is not going to be 100% powerful against or something. I don't know. Here's what I would do. Talk to the other players. See what they think. See if they noticed anything weird, anything odd, anything off. And if they have, bring it up together uh, to the DM and let him know that what's going on right now is very unfair and everybody would like to participate. Everybody would like to be singled out together as a party instead of, you know, just having Cleric be beat down the whole time. At the end of the day, you could always just ask DM, Hey DM, do you just want me to re-roll from a Cleric? Should I just re-roll to something else? Can I re-roll? Will you allow me? Listen, there are multiple ways to solve this problem, hopefully. And I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not saying it's the one solution you could do, but you could just leave. You don't have to be at that table. You could just go to another table where DM won't target you. Simple as that. DM made our characters have a threesome without asking. Well, there's a first time for everything. I'm not really into d and I prefer other TTRPG systems, but this place that I used to visit on a regular basis started to have weekly D&D meetings that would do one-shots every week, and everyone was invited, regardless of age or experience. The first week went fine. There were multiple one-shots happening simultaneously, but I mostly played with a British DM that was going to move back to England soon. Then I've met the problem DM. Looking back, I think someone had mentioned that one of his one-shots had a homophobic final boss, which wouldn't necessarily be a problem if those one-shots hadn't been advertised as something completely free of any bigotry. But I wasn't there, so maybe the player had given him consent to tackle sensitive subjects. I doubt. Our mission was pretty simple, to make sure the royal wedding was going to happen, but the bride was angry at the groom for some petty reason we had to find a way to make her forgive him. She immediately started to flirt with every single playable character. Okay, weird, but we kept trying to convince her that her fiancé loved her. She proceeded to make sexual comments about herself and the characters. It's worth mentioning that the DM never asked us about our ages, but one of the girls at the table mentioned that she was starting high school, and people always assume that I'm underage. Yeah, if your games are gonna go in a little bit more sensitive adult topics, you should probably make sure, actually not even probably, definitely make sure that everybody at the table is, first of all, is of age for that sort of stuff that can, you know, completely be fine with it. And if they're all right with that sort of thing, listen, not every player wants to be involved in romance, drama, rom-com, sitcom kind of thing. Sometimes they just want to fight or they want to have a cult mystery or whatever. Maybe a demon incursion to deal with. It sounds like the princess really doesn't want to be part of the marriage. So, I mean, one of the answers probably would be to just tell her to just not get married. Yeah, I know hard to make the marriage happen. But I mean, if, if the girl doesn't want to, if she wants to flirt with everybody else, then listen, be a free spirit and don't have to marry do whatever you want. My character was some kind of a minotaur created by the DM and the bride said that he was exactly how she liked her cattle. Young and breedable. I can't believe that I literally just read out young and breedable without any sense of irony or joke or satire or anything on an RPG horror story video. I mean, it's not the first time I use the word breedable unironically or as a joke and stuff for friends and everything, but that's the first one for the RPG horror stories. Needless to say, I was extremely uncomfortable, but I stayed quiet because no one else was complaining and I was afraid that I would ruin the mood or sound like a Puritan. Nothing is wrong with speaking up. If you need to speak up, speak up. There are situations out there that are just weird. If you just stay silent, a DM and everybody else assumes you're cool with it. Even though inside your head you're like, I don't like this. This needs to stop. But I don't want to be a prude or anything. No, tell people. You should probably tell people. At the end of the session, our characters managed to make the bride forgive the groom and they started to make out in front of the party. The DM asked us for a charisma check without disclosing its purpose. It turns out that everyone who succeeded immediately joined the couple for a threesome. Is it still called a threesome when 5 plus people are involved? He didn't ask us if we wanted to join. He simply started to narrate the details of how each character would use their skills to please the couple. 
and then the one shot ended. Just like that. We didn't even see the wedding ceremony. That's... <laughs> that's not even how charisma checks work. You don't just charisma roll to get everybody to join an orgy. <laughs> I mean, unless that's how you do it. I don't know. I'm a charisma caster. Have I been doing things wrong? Was I supposed to be rolling for orgy charisma checks the whole time? I don't know. Why are the players forced to hear how the DM describes their players' skillful ways of how to please the groom or the bride? Like, what? <laughs> what if I... What if... Let's say, for example, it's me there, right? And I'm like, yeah, uh, what if Maro just would not give a fuck and just go and drink a lot? Because that's what Mara would do. I, Mara would easily just like, he wouldn't care for the wedding. He would just be over at the bar, right? Open tap and just chugging away and probably just getting hammered and plastered with a buddy or something. That's what Mara would do. <laughs> what if I don't want to join part of a three-way? Why was I? Well, or I guess, guess quintuple. It's, it's an orgy at this point. If it's more than three people at this point, I mean, you just safely can classify it as an orgy at this point. If it's five plus, yeah, I think that's count as an orgy. It was my last D&D session at that place. The British DM left, and I didn't want to risk playing with the problem DM again. I later texted one of the girls, and she mentioned that she and her sister, the one who was in high school, were also uncomfortable with the DM, but that was their first D&D session, so they didn't know the DM's behavior was normal for a TTRPG game. Oh my god, imagine your first experience of playing TTRPGs or D&D is meeting this sicko DM, and then you just think, oh! That's d and That's normal now. I guess if somebody rolls charisma checks, you just join the bangathon. Some of these RPG horror stories makes me think that uh, that people trapped in the clown world. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> this is insane. Jesus Christ! I can't even imagine having to show somebody like that as a first experience. That must be traumatizing. That's an easy way to get somebody not to want to participate or to start thinking d and is some weird fetish game. Which, I mean, you're allowed to run a fetish game in D&D if you want, if everybody's, you know, perfectly fine with it, but, like, as a first-time experience? Why? <laughs> it's like you'd be meeting somebody for the very first time, saying, Hello, I'm Maro. Here's my list of 376 fetishes that I'm really into, and I hope you're cool with that kind of thing. Like, it just, no, you just, you start off by saying, Hi, how are you today? Nice weather we're having. The introduction. You don't just lay it out all this stuff that you're into immediately. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so, that happened. Don't let your DM put you in a three-way or an orgy or whatever. And with that, that's going to be all our stories for today. I want to thank you very much for watching, and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG Horror Stories ever goes down, or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales Tomorrow. Bye-bye.